I was eight years old in my best party dress as I walked alongside my cousin and we entered the lobby of a major hospital. Our grandfather was recovering from a heart attack in the ICU and we were stopped in our tracks. We were told that we could not go upstairs because we were too young and I remember the two of us just staring at this woman very confused. And then a door opened inside and I heard it. There has to be another way. There has to be another way. And then it screamed, go. And I turned to my cousin and said, Hillary, run, run. And together the two of us bolted past the greeter up to the sixth floor where we found our grandfather. Big, huge, beautiful embrace. And then with my hand in his, I looked around the room. It was very scary, very white, wires, tubes, machines. How does anybody ever get better in a place like this? How does anybody ever get better alone? Round two, there has to be another way. I had my critical moment at the age of eight, a moment where a knowing and a strength moves in that wasn't there before. I believe we all have these, these defining moments. Think about yours. How was it delivered? Was it delivered in a moment of extraordinary synchronicity, unedited passion, horrific loss, pain, a pet, solitude in the forest? It is a moment when we are stretched and it is a turning point in our lives. Every story has a turning point. And in that moment, in that exquisite moment, I believe we are handed a set of glasses that allow us to see inside. Acuity to our meaning, our calling, our own sound of self. Once you see, you can't unsee, and once you know, you certainly can't unknow. When you find that something extraordinary inside, it can never be lost, that it can become your sound of self. Not surprisingly, I went on to become an occupational therapist and I worked in elder care for many years. And then in my 40s, I held an executive position in aging for a Fortune 500 company and I was downsized. Divorced, mother of three, the perfect recipe for a complete freak out. Only I didn't. I watch colleagues do cannibal jumps into the pool of corporate recruiters and headhunters, and all I felt was dissonance. Again, there has to be another way. There has to be another way. For years leading up to this moment in my life, I had wanted to go to Africa. This was it. I didn't have a job. It was the perfect time to go. The other way was to buy a ticket. Summer of 2007, I am in the Serengeti Plains of Tanzania, where at sunset it wraps you in an orange that is unimaginable. The air smells like acacia fires, and elders convene under baobab trees. And there in the distance, a big tent, and a woman alone in the tent crying. And I decided to approach. I pulled up a chair and said, are you OK? What's happening? And she said, I'm not okay. I'm not even a little bit okay. I'm one of the top physicians in London and I can't do anything here. There are no medical supplies anywhere. I'm watching children die and I could save them. I held her arms and said, I'm so sorry because the truth was in that moment there was nothing else to say. And then again, it happened. There has to be another way. And then I started to think out loud with her. You know, in the United States, because of regulations, millions of pounds of medical supplies are required to be discarded every year. There may be a possibility here for the supplies there to impact in Africa and in other sites worldwide. I went home with her pain and her story on me, and I had to do something about this injustice. So I did the unimaginable. I started a non-for-profit in something I knew nothing about. Nothing. Warehousing, logistics, international customs, collecting supplies from hospitals. But here's what I did know. I trusted my ability to lead. I trusted my ability to inspire. And I knew I could follow. There has to be another way. 
The rooms of our lives don't create our sounds of self. We bring them to every space and every relationship we enter. Ten years ago, I started the Afia Foundation. It is named Afia to honor the land that inspired the work. Afia means health in the key Swahili language. In just 10 years, we have moved into a 17,000 square foot warehouse. We have 14 in staff. We have rescued over 9 million pounds of medical supplies and equipment and have shipped to 82 nations. Because they exist, we do. Healthcare is a human right, and there has to be another way has led to one for hundreds of thousands worldwide. Now you can imagine the cacophony of support I received when I launched this. People in my world and the negative narrative that can surround us. What are you doing? How are you gonna do this? You know nothing about this. How are you going to make a living? My favorite was when people would lean in close and say, are you all right? <laughs> And if that isn't hard enough for each of us to manage, the negative narrative of self is equally challenging. I believe we bookend ourselves between the two and it pulls us from the sound of self. Inside, I started to say, I don't know how I'm going to do this. I visioned this, I've imagined it, and now how am I going to bring this to life without help? I couldn't ask for help. And where did that lead me? To the front door of pneumonia. It literally pulled my breath away. So as I recovered, not giving up, but recovered, I decided to use a trick that I had used with myself and with clients in the past, a beautiful treatment tool. You put a coin in your pocket, and every time you have a negative thought, you cognitively reframe and empower yourself. So every time I had, I can't ask people for help, I would pull the coin out and flip it to get to the other side. And here's what I started to believe. People are hungry for altruism. There aren't enough chances to impact the lives of others on an enormous scale. How extraordinary would it be if people here knew their hands were the last to touch the supplies before they were unpacked abroad? to give many the opportunity to be engaged in that invisible, beautiful handoff. Today, thousands and thousands and thousands of volunteers are involved in Afia's work across the United States. I think we can choose the life we have and the sound of self and how we use it. We get to color the composition of a lifetime. That is truly our choice. And for a moment, I'd like to ask you to close your eyes. I'd like you to imagine your sound of self, your source of meaning, and the last time you bravely tried to use it and take a risk. What did you hear around you? Invite the negative of narrative of others to you. What did you hear in yourself? Be with those voices and those sounds. And now open your eyes, pick up your coin, and flip it. Thank you.